Hello. Fiscal policy is about manipulating the government spending and taxation levels in order to manage the level of aggregate demand. So, aggregate demand in an economy, which is all the spending in the economy at a given price level and a given, um, in a given time period, is made up of the spending of consumers, that's consumption, plus the spending of firms, that's investment, plus the spending of the government, that's G, plus the spending of foreigners in our economy, that's the sale of exports, minus what we spend on foreign goods, that's import spending. So it's cons consumption, investment, government spending, and net export earnings. Now, if the government wants to manipulate aggregate demand, perhaps it wants to boost aggregate demand if the economy is <coughs> lagging, and maybe there's a recession, perhaps it wants to reduce the level of aggregate demand because the economy is overheating, there's a danger of inflation. It can manipulate aggregate demand by changing its own government spending and by influencing the ability of consumers to spend money and do consumption by changing tax rates. So, let's imagine that the problem facing the government is a weak economy lacking demand. One thing the government might do then is to loosen its fiscal policy. That would mean it would raise its government spending or cut tax so that people have more disposable income and can go out and spend more, raising consumption. Or both, raising government spending and cutting tax. And this would boost aggregate demand and would lead to, a, a, on the diagram, a shift outwards of the aggregate demand leading to a higher output level and hopefully create jobs. Well, that's the theory, but in recent uh, years, governments have got themselves into problems with their own finances because they've done too much loosening of uh, their fiscal policy and they've too frequently, year after year, overspent and they've built up enormous national debts or public debts. Because if government spending increases and tax, the tax take of the government, that's all the revenue it receives, falls, then clearly there's a, there's a problem for governments in their financing. They may run a budget deficit or a fiscal deficit within one year. Those fiscal deficits are financed through the government selling bonds. The government borrows money. It sells a promise that it will pay back more money in the future. A bond it sells those to financial institutions and perhaps to other uh, interested parties at home or abroad. And those bonds in the future mature and they have to be paid back. And that's what got, has got governments like the Greek government and the Irish government, and the Portuguese government, uh, and other governments into trouble, especially those ones, but other governments also have serious pressure at the moment uh, as they've done too much overspending in recent years and they've built up these enormous debts. So that's led now to some governments doing the opposite. They are trying to cut their government spending and increase taxes to raise the tax take so that they can start to claw back some of that um, uh, overspending that they've been doing and, and to reduce the overspending, reduce the size of their budget deficits uh, year by year by year until perhaps they can run a budget surplus and actually underspend, collect more money in tax than, than they are uh, spending in the public sector. The trouble is that, let me take my rubber, the trouble is that right now it appears that this is the wrong policy to be running. Right now, as you know, GDP, the output, the value of all the output produced in the economy in one, in one year, and um, this is time. Over time, economies do not grow steadily. Over time, economies grow with booms and recessions, booms and recessions, recoveries and downturns, recoveries and downturns. And right now, perhaps, we're in this kind of stage where the economy, the GDP of, of the economy over time has not been increasing in many countries. It's been stagnant or has even been falling. This period of time in the business cycle, which 
if that is the trend rate, this is what we would call a negative output gap. There's a recession, a recession because the GDP has been falling and it's created this negative output gap. And the, the policy, the theory says that the policy, demand management policy, should try and pick up and boost aggregate demand. And yet we're just as, just as fiscal policy should be loosened, it seems, to, to raise aggregate demand, we find governments apparently doing the opposite. They're, 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 they're implementing austerity measures, they're, they're, they're raising tax, they're cutting their government spending. They seem to be going against what, what economic theory would suggest they should do. I'm going to change this diagram now of the business cycle and turn it into an aggregate demand, aggregate supply diagram. So in an aggregate demand, aggregate supply diagram, here is the price level, here is output, here is the aggregate supply curve, and the maximum possible output is YF, well AD is some way below that, here is AD let's say, output is only at Y1, there is spare capacity in the economy, the economy is not on its PPF, it's within its PPF. It could boost its output, but there's unemployment. What theory suggests government should do is to stimulate aggregate demand with a loosening of fiscal policy, boosting aggregate demand with an accompanied multiplier effect, hopefully maybe pushing aggregate demand further out. There might be some inflation, prices might rise a little, but output would would also rise and we'd be closer to full employment. But what governments are doing is quite the opposite. They are tightening their fiscal uh, position. They are raising the tax, which reduces the ability of people to spend. They are also uh, cutting their government spending, which has a negative multiplier effect, and that can even have the danger of throwing aggregate demand further backwards, reducing aggregate demand, and perhaps worsening the problem. Why is this happening? Why are governments doing this? Why are they flying in the face of, uh, of, of what theory would suggest they should do? The reason is that they've got themselves into serious financial problems um, and the government's own debt positions are so severe that they must take precedence over what would be a preferable thing to do, which is to loosen the fiscal policy. Governments simply can't afford to run fiscal deficits of any significant size anymore, and they're desperately trying to reduce the size of their fiscal deficit. So, in Greece, for instance, in Greece, for instance, where in uh, 2000 and, uh, 2011 now, uh, GDP is predicted during 2011 to fall by 6.6%. Negative growth of 6.6%, really drastic. Yet the government is raising tax and cutting its own government spending to solve its own serious budget deficit. Because if I've got my numbers roughly right, um, the budget deficit of 2009 was something like 15% of GDP. Uh, 2010 reduced to something like, with all these tough austerity measures, expected it's reduced to something like, I think it's something like 11%, I could be wrong, and 2011 down again to something like uh, 7 or 8%. Still overspending by a huge amount, still overspending by, st overspending, you know, government spending is still larger than the tax take by about 8%, not as severe as it was, but still massively overspending. And of course, all the debt they have is generating interest. It's very difficult for the government to to suppress its, its pattern of overspending. But it's having to do that because the cost that the Greek government, and this goes for the Portuguese and the Irish and, and even the Spanish and, and other governments around the world, the cost of trying to sell government bonds to increase uh, their ability to spend, the, very, very expensive. And so they can't afford to overspend. They literally can't afford to, to significantly overspend anymore. And so they're being forced to reduce their overspending, and, uh, and that is hurting what are already very uh, serious situations in depressed economies. Now, one more thing, two other, uh, two other governments especially have chosen a slightly different route. Rather than selling 
rather than relying on the selling of bonds to finance their overspending, they're doing a thing called quantitative easing. I'm talking about the US government and the British government. They are doing quantitative easing. Which is a bit of a mouthful, so it's called QE. Let's take the American government as an example. They did a big, a lot of this quantitative easing back in 2009, and they're currently, as I speak in, at the start of May 2011, they're currently in the middle of doing another bout of, of quantitative easing. Um, I think I'm right in saying October 2010 through to, it's expected, June 2011, they are doing $600 billion worth of quantitative easing. What is quantitative easing? It is, instead of raising money to pay for the overspending, instead of raising it by the selling of bonds to financial institutions like banks around the world, instead of that, the government is instructing the central bank, in America that's the Federal Reserve Bank, to create the money to buy the bonds from the government. So effectively, electronically, the central bank is creating money with which they buy government bonds. They're creating money to give to the government in return for bonds, instead of the bonds being truly sold on the open market. A lot of people argue this will be very inflationary in the future. Maybe three or four years from now, this increase in the money supply, once it filters into the system, perhaps gets multiplied, um, will be very damaging in terms of inflation. But that's another way of financing um, another way of financing uh, overspending by government. To me, quantitative easing, although I'm talking about fiscal policy, is also a kind of monetary policy because it affects the money supply. Monetary policy isn't only about manipulating interest rates. Um, either way, it's certainly having an effect on aggregate demand as it allows the government to, to continually overspend. Um, so there we are, there's some thoughts about fiscal policy and specifically now the problems that many governments are having in financing uh, their own budgets uh, at, at, in a time and the effect that that's having in a time of real economic difficulty for the developed world. <coughs> okay, some thoughts for you as you approach your exams. Okay, thank you very much.